Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jillian, and I am thrilled to welcome you all to the Internet 2.0 Conference, the USA edition. After we had a blast in our spring edition, we have returned to Vegas bigger and better. We are honored to have our award-winning technologist, C-suite executives, uh, startup founders, and pioneers from many tech disciplines amongst us today. During these three days, our sessions will walk you through every development in the tech sector, from advancements in the AI field to cybersecurity issues. Tech visionaries will also be recognized in their outstanding accomplish accomplishments and for serving as role models for the next generation of leaders. So yes, the Internet 2.0 conference is going to be jam-packed with interactions and learning opportunities. Now, before we get started, I would like to thank our platinum sponsors, Flow Patterns and Crypto Clue, our gold sponsor, Boger Consulting LLC, and finally, our silver sponsor, Flip Investors LL Inc. We truly appreciate your commitment and generosity. To our fantastic audience here, please use the official event hashtag, which is internet2conf, for any of your tweets or posts that you share online while you're here. Again, I just want you to get that hashtag right. It's hashtag internet2, the number two, and then conf, C-O-N-F. So please use that on your Instagram and Facebook for your hashtag. Now that we have the scene set for the session of day one at the Internet 2.0 conference, which is going to be on the topic now of can we adopt edge computing to bridge the gap between data storage and computation? Correct me if I'm wrong, but data is the fuel of this century for quicker decision making and better outcomes. Businesses must close the gap between data storage and computing as they produce, store, and process more data. Now let's hear from our first moderator. We have Yuki Chong, the managing director at 2Expand, who will take this session forward. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome uh, Yuki Chong. Session, I will say that. Probably people are getting tired, they flew in, stayed out, whatever. So. We do want to try and keep this fairly open as well, but we do want to talk about some areas specifically that we've experienced that we've kind of dealt with day in, day out in our careers. And we want to share some of that, see if we, you know, hopefully give you some insight, but we would love questions and open type of feedback type of comments as well, guys. Okay. So with that in mind, I think it'll be good if we just go around and give some background color, right, as far as, you know, what they've been doing. Ben, you want to kick it off? Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Good morning, everyone. I uh, hope everybody has the juices flowing now. Um, so there's going to be some really good content today. So I'm founder and CEO of Mad Software. We're a data-centric software company. Uh, we have our own proprietary uh, ETL platform. And we interconnect into enterprise systems and smaller systems as well and manage the intraday data flow between the systems. And so when we talk about edge computing, you know, we are talking about uh, data as well. And so I uh, appreciate everybody for coming and uh, leave it to you. Sure. Good morning, everyone. This is uh, Prasenjit Badra. Uh, my first name is a kind of a tongue twister, so I go with Jeet Badra. Mm -hmm. I'm the founder and CEO of Ranial Systems. Uh, the company is uh, trying to embed uh, technologies which are patented, and right now we are funded by NSF. So we are actually working on making edge computing intelligent enough so that they can run artificial intelligence within a small box itself and thereby provide an automated collaboration. So this technology has been already used to some of the strategic solutions in the clean tech and manufacturing space. We have also embedded an incremental edge computing and AI in the area of financial services. So a major transformation with some of the major banks kind of using our technologies to deliver real-time operational intelligence in their day-to-day -day operations, predominantly on the capital market space. I'd love to share some of our experiences, and we'd like to hear from you and collaborate and enrich the community going forward. I love it. So on my side, my name's Uki Chong. Uh, I'm the managing director and founder for a company called 2Expand. It literally just launched November 1st of this year, just to give you guys a heads up. Prior to that, I've been with uh, a lot of media slash marketing technology companies. 
Data-wise, I will say that on this side of the spectrum, we handled a lot of personal data, right? Personal information. So with that in mind, you know, I think you know, some of the things that people should be aware of is obviously how it affects you guys, but how companies are potentially leveraging that data too. And with this topic, I think it's about potentially opening it up, right? Getting people to you know, understand what's going on, what's kind of behind the scenes, what's black box, what's some of the bottlenecks out there, so that you know, we can really talk about how we could hopefully remove the barrier, guys, when it comes down to it. So with that in mind, you know, I've helped startups ramp up as well from the ground floor. So I'm a very sales focused guy as well, but I will say operationally, how companies manage data is very, very important. I cannot emphasize that enough. Okay, whether you're a startup or enterprise level, it does not matter, okay? So with that in mind, we can start jumping into it. Sure. Yeah, so, you know, when we talk about edge, you know, edge uh, computing, really, um, edge started years ago. Um, there's keywords for everything in the uh, in the industry, you know. There's a keyword for cloud, you know, cloud computing, which is basically mainframe computing. Um, but edge really started taking off, you know, within the last decade, uh, you know, with um, uh, the cellular networks expanding, uh, you know, when uh, 4G uh, came out, and then you know, 5G, and so basically what that did is it, it allowed the pipeline to expand for allowing information to get to devices. You know, a device could be a server, could be a, could be a cell phone, could be a refrigerator, could be anything with the Internet of Things today. And, and so basically, you know, then today there's still a lot, a lot of legacy systems in place that do back-end processing. And so, you know, from a business standpoint, you know, data and information, you know, has to go to to a centralized processing system uh, in order to you know produce you know whatever result you, that, that you need to do so so with edge computing you know you have the capability of capturing data aggregating data at the source you know which could be a mobile application um, like I said it could be a refrigerator that automatically orders food when you know you're out of ketchup so um, you know businesses and their digital transformations, you know, uh, are constantly trying to um, replace legacy systems, or if they're not able to today, um, augment the legacy systems with uh, more real-time systems that could be, you know, basically at some, at a source. Well, let me ask you guys this then, okay? So those are a lot of terms out there, right? I'm not sure how much of everyone picks up, but why edge computing, guys? Is, you know, what's the best thing about why people should consider adopting this type of you know, strategy or technology? What do you guys think? I think I will, I will piggyback on what Ben said, that, that certain technologies are uh, kind of evolving and creating its own value chain. And then again, it's getting merged into it, and then it's something new coming up. So it's, if you connect the dots in the last 30 years, it's basically mainframe to dot com, like mainframe to client server technologies which came then we bought certain compute at the at the closest to the compute right where where exactly the application is running the dot com again we moved back and made everything centralized when these mobile technologies came in and we are talking about a multi channel solutions we bought again a good portion of the compute closest to where the application is running and so and then again cloud computing we again went back and tried to do everything centralized so that the, the, the purpose of it is basically what's happening now. There are certain, in one side, there are certain evolution of technologies which are kind of uh, creating certain behavioral aspects, certain expectations from the users, from the end users, from the business to basically make use of the data and the applications. Earlier, we could not even think of a system which is running like a two terabytes worth of processing uh, in, a, in a given night and then producing certain outputs. So like in the Internet of Things, like when you're talking about typical utility systems or manufacturing systems, they're using the SCADA uh, applications, right? So they're also kind of 
the predecessor of the current IoT systems we are talking about. Companies started talking about it, the edge computing, because they said that we are generating a lot of data, and a lot of data getting produced at the point of action, but no one is really taking care of that, right? And it is, even though there are kind of great deal of innovations happening in the area of networking space, you know, you'd be not be able to move all this data pretty much in real time to produce the desired outcome. So it is important for you to define certain use cases which will actually help you to create a boundary conditions wherein you'd have a good portion of the data and processing done exactly where the operations are actually happening. So this is what is kind of evolved the edge computing, right? That's more on the internet, uh, you know, industrial 4.0 side of it. On the enterprise side of it, what happened, I mean, I can definitely maybe I'll elaborate on a few use cases. Uh, you know, even until maybe 2020, a lot of capital market solutions, the advisory solutions, those are in place, were actually using historical data, like data until yesterday to advise their customers. There was no solution in place, right, wherein they could basically ingest the existing data and the trading patterns to figure out, and the market pattern to basically figure out what is the right, right way to go and be more responsive. And then when they did the cloud migrations, and they're talking about solutions which are going to be highly available, so they probably, let's say, put that in an AWS, and AWS one is the East Coast, the other in our West Coast, and the replication is 80 miles, more than 80 miles apart, you'd not be able to replicate that. So at that point, it became, you know, very critical that you bring in technologies and solutions, a part of the use cases which are going to be executed at the point of action. So this is how what we call as there are there are three layers of computing. One then has touched upon with the industrial 4.0 and the IoT side of it. Then you have mobile edge computing, which is going to be evolving with Internet 5.0, right? And then you have enterprise cloud edge computing part, like where we are basically creating certain you know, hypervisions and satellites, which will basically decide on premise of the client and kind of replicate with cloud so that it can kind of balance the, the inter workload. So I'm all about making stuff relevant. I'm sure we are too, yeah. right guys? So let's try and do a poll real quick. In a show of hands, can I see how many people here are from startups? Okay. How many from enterprise teams? How many on the tech side? Okay. Why should startups understand edge computing? Well, the one word that I have is, I have is competition. So with data being the new oil, you need to learn how to dig for that data, how to find it, how to extract it, right? So as a startup, and really it's any company, um, it, it's a race, right? So it's how can we get to the data quicker? Um, how we can extract that information? I mean, how, how can we use that data in order to uh, either uh, find a solution to a problem, right? Or use that data in order to uh, make decisions in the future, right? And so, it's, it's very much, you know, when I, I talked about legacy systems, right? And uh, it, it's very much a race, right? So uh, companies, you know, you've probably heard the term, you know, digital transformation. And, and, and really what that is, is that's transforming legacy older systems that don't have the capability of today's technology into a technology that can compete with kind of the, the leading edge and, and the latest cutting systems. So it's very much something that companies take very, very seriously. Um, and uh, as a company, if you don't do that, then there are chances you could be left behind. I, I think I will add to it is basically, you know, when we, like, one and a half years ago, we, we got patent in 2015, and one and a half years ago when we applied for this, this NSF can, they said that, okay, in your area, there are a lot of companies that are doing pretty much like edge computing. It's getting crowded over, over and over again, right? So 
they said that, what is the difference that you could make? We said, no, we are not going to say that we're going to collect and process the data. Rather, we would make this device as intelligent, right? So that has given certain amount of uh, you know, confidence in terms of our innovation, where government, the US federal government, can spend certain amount of money to, uh, to build this R&D into a real product. So for, for the next generation enterprise solutions, no matter wherever you are working on startups, I think this is sort of a de facto standard that your time to value in terms of presenting the solution, presenting the outcome, is becoming very critical. And usually, we do a kind of a poor job at times when a new technology comes. We first figure out the technology, what it is, and then try to retrofit into the solution. So you, some of you may not have that requirement. But let's say if you're a mobile solution space, right? Is there a way you could bring in a certain amount of processing here and then do a store forward pattern, implement a store forward pattern to do something on the cloud? Does that really create a value, a differentiator? So this is definitely an accelerator in terms of you could think of in your use case whether you could fit that in or not, right? So there are two things out of it. Number one, one, you bring in intelligence at the time. Second is so far in industry, when we work with data, we actually ignore the contextual relevance of the data, right? That means if I have the data, I have the transactional data is sitting there, you're processing, you're running executions, you're able to produce a lot of intelligence out of it, and then maybe you can use it. Definitely, there is a value, but understand, a data produced at a specific time, the time dimension to it is that event is also very relevant to take certain actions. And as we are talking about robotics, as we are talking about you know, more relevant processing in real time, we haven't used AI pretty much in real time. There are not many use cases out there. So that is where I think edge computing will make a difference. And those who are in the startup journey, you could think of bringing in edge computing to basically serve or create that differentiator in your use cases. I guess one of the key things to think about too, everyone, is the long-term perspective, right? Is I'm pretty sure everyone's in a company to try, especially on the startup side anyways, to try and get to the next level, right? So what do you guys need to do to take from startup stage to whether you want your VC rounds or your, you know, take it bootstrapped all the way to exit yourself. That's the process steps that you guys need to start foundationally putting in place, I think, from a long-term perspective. To give you guys some perspective is when we talk data, this is just my, my thoughts on it really quick, is when we talk data, especially as a company, what is data? Just chew on that. What is data? What type of data are you guys trying to look at? Why? I'm pretty sure it all comes down to one thing, is you guys are trying to monetize that data in some form, whether it's through paid solutions or you know, offerings for X, Y, Z. You're trying to monetize that data, guys. So in order to monetize it, you also need to protect it really well. If you guys see all the back-end you know, tactics in the space that catches up to companies later on because they didn't do the basics, you guys would be amazed because they start burning left and right for a reason. So I guess from that side of the guys, how would you guys say like from a practical standpoint, how can a startup say, hey, this is how I should start you know, looking at how to set up edge computing? Any thoughts on that? Well, you know, part of it is, is okay, what problem are you solving? Right, um, and so that could be just a wide range of things, right? So you know, identify what problem you're solving, and and one and the second thing about data is, data is just data, until there's something that turns it into information, right? So a lot of companies and software is always collecting data, right? But you can't really do anything with it until there's a process in place which turns that data into something meaningful, right? So, you know, solving a problem, um, turning that data into something meaningful because you can solve a problem, but 
you still have to leverage that, that data. And so um, I, I think that uh, being able to identify one is, you know, are you able to use edge computing to, you know, like I said, it could be a mobile app, could be, uh, could be an internet of thing, right? Um, but being able to uh, capture that data, turning it into information, using that information to make decisions, right? And then that kind of comes into uh, internal decisions or decisions for your customers. So everything has interconnects. Um, and so uh, a lot of times, you know, I've talked with people and, and you know, they, some people haven't heard the, the name of edge computing, but they are doing edge computing um, because of one is, is transacting with an, in an application or maybe you have a company that, that has uh, sensors, right? And those sensors are, are connected to the internet and collecting data. So, uh, so, so basically kind of what, you know, um, what, what was the question on that? What can they do to just start getting it done? You know, best practice on setting up best practice as computing tactics. Uh, one of the things you can do is fail. Absolutely. Um, because nobody gets it done right the first time. And uh, when you fail, you learn what you did improperly, right? And then you do it again. And then you fail again, and then you do it again. And, but you need to have a vision, right? Uh, you need to have a plan, and you need, need to have execution. And so uh, I, I think that, um, you know, a planning without execution is failure. Um, execution without planning is typically failure, right? And so that's why I say is, is nobody is going to get it right the first time. You might create an application that just fails, you know, flat on its face, right? And so then you were talking about compliance, right? And if you have certain type of data, you have to meet certain compliance standards. And a lot of times, you know, I've, I've consulted with companies that have failed on that, and they've failed on their compliance, right? And they've had to, to learn from that and make quick adjustments. And like I said from the beginning, um, competition, right? Your competitor is trying to do what it is that you're doing. And so um, I think that, um, um, don't be scared about competition, but, but use that as a, a driving force, right, to, to not let failure get in the way of your goals. I think to add more, it's like you have to start with the design thinking, right, as a startup. And of course, it is also applicable for enterprise, uh, you know, uh, enterprises, those who are trying to bring in emerging technologies. The design thinking means where exactly something like an edge computing will fit in, right, to give you a competitive advantage. And I'll give you like three use cases that we have achieved in a, in briefly. There are plenty of you know, energy management solution providers, you know, right from GE, ABB, Siemens, part of the world to a uh, lot of startups. Basically what they do, they basically connect to the grid. You have right now with this, with the, with the you know, evolution of smart energy like solar, in, you know, utility grid solar, mobile storage. So they're capturing data and providing a real-time visibility in terms of what's going on in your grid. Right now, as we kind of gone ahead with that maturity cycle, there are scenarios wherein you have the solar data coming in. Now, if you have to make solar primary, you have to sense the grid in real time by which if the solar goes down, because it's very unpredictable, your conventional grid will step up. So now you have to do the switching. This is n literally not possible with a cloud computing construct. Right? So this is where you are creating significant value in terms of creating a solution which could be autonomous enough, which is not dependent on the network in a given catastrophic situations. You are well up. Number two, if you are in cybersecurity space. So far, all the cybersecurity solutions we are building, and this is another patent pending from our side, all of these solutions are predominantly enterprise-based. But now you're talking about systems which are not 
connected to your enterprise. A lot of processing is happening away from your network. If there is any intrusive attack there, how do you manage that? Are you going to deal with an after effect? The answer is no. So we are using this cognitive model that we have developed, which is a unique proprietary model in our case, with the federated learning, it can actually detect the intrusive attacks at the edge, at the point of action. So this patent is pending now probably will be You're talking AI, is that yeah. right? It, yeah. Right. So AI in combination with edge computing. I mean, that's a de facto. So now see, you are creating a difference. You are bringing in a new solution in the marketplace that is non, not captured by most traditional artificial intelligence solutions. I mean, AI-based cyber security solutions, or even traditional cyber security solutions. Third, if we are talking about, I was talking about the you know, capital market scenarios, in order to execute one single trade that comes from the SWIFT, using the SWIFT protocol, you are basically running a bunch of you know, 10, 12 rules at a given point of time, depending on your asset classes and everything. So far, all these systems are like, you know, positioned within enterprise, uh, within the same data center. Sometimes the data center is even close to the NASDAQ, in case of if you're dealing with a high performance computing. Now you're talking about bringing it in the cloud, but then you can't manage that in the cloud. Like you push the data into cloud, cloud process it, by the time it comes, boom. The trade is probably either settled much later point of time when the price is actually down. So now you have to, you have to leverage that extreme scaling of the cloud, but at the same time, you have to have something like a satellite and hypervision or a hybrid footprint of that solution, which can run certain use cases much faster than it could. So whichever use case you are trying to address, whichever problem or imperatives you are trying to address, you might find there is an area where you could embed edge computing to make a difference. You have to identify that followed by your design thinking. Who should own edge computing strategy for a company, guys? Who owns that? Well, I mean, I, I would say it depends on the problem that you're trying to solve, right? And so uh, there are use cases where uh, batch processing systems, you know, end of day processing um, makes sense, right? And um, they're, they're, I, I would say edge, edge computing is, is, uh, can be a bridge, you know, not necessarily a replacement, uh, because you know, edge computing of today is going to be something else tomorrow, right? And so uh, it, it really depends on, again, your, your model, your business model. Uh, it depends on what products or services you're, you're offering, uh, and, and again, you know, what problem you're, you're solving. So, Again, if you are a company and you need processing you know, in real time, or you need, you need to bring in data from a source right, that is either a location, a satellite office, uh, a mobile application, or you're a company and you have sensors, right? Maybe you uh, work in the energy sector and you have well sensors, uh, and uh, you need to bring that data in from those sensors, you know, into uh, another location, right? Um, you know, also uh, if uh, you know your company, and uh, you have multiple locations, and you have uh, employee data, right? And you have a point of sale. Um, you need the capability to be able to process transactions in real time, and not wait for the end of day batch processing through a legacy system. So. Uh, uh, really, is that real-time aspect, do you think, guys? Is that what it's coming down to? Yes. I, I think it's near, near real-time, yes. Near real-time, real-time. I, I think, you know, the, the, the important part is, you know, can the CIO organization, when you're talking about large enterprise, and as a, as a startup, if you're going and addressing, okay, I have a solution which also has edge computing, who do I go and target to? The CIO organization is kind of busy keeping the lights on. It's very difficult for them to switch from like a, a typical business transformation project that runs roughly about like two to three years sometimes in a, in a large organization landscape. Uh, CIO teams are quite busy. So if they have many organizations in today's debt are having 
uh, CTO organizations. They came up with the CTO organization, ranging from pharma, financial services, not in the utilities much, but like retail logistics. You'd see there's a CTO organization. So they're the good target audience when it comes to edge computing. Now, edge computing is a horizontal construct. It is not specific to a specific, specific uh, you know, strategic business unit. Even though, when you are literally trying to implement that, you have to have the stick of the business to ensure that whether they're gonna pay for that, that extra compute that you're bringing in, that investment you're bringing in. Is that a real ROI into it, right? Yeah, that, that kind of goes back into, okay, having a sponsor, right? So if you're an IT group, um, and I've worked in IT for many, many, many years, and you wanna bring this to, you know, either uh, you want to find this, you have a potential solution to a problem, right? And you need a, a buy off on that, right? And so, so the, typically the business, you know, or whoever that sponsor is gonna be, uh, needs to buy into that. And so, you know, what is the value proposition, right? What are you gonna be able to bring to the table with this solution? Uh, or, and, and, and really the same thing applies if you have a customer, right? And you're trying to do some sort of uh, digital transformation, right? You need to have a sponsor from your customer. Um, and um, you need to be able to identify who you're targeting, you know, what group you're targeting, right? To, again, solve that problem. So I've seen a lot of great, um, right, software applications and, um, a lot of failure because one is uh, if you're providing a product or a solution uh, and uh, you're not able to really connect with the potential sponsor on that, then all that it's gonna be is just a great idea. So, so you know, it's uh, for example with um, uh, HR and payroll, you know, we automate uh, HR and payroll processes for a lot of our customers by interconnecting into enterprise applications, scheduling systems, HR systems, and uh, a lot of near real-time processing happens at location. And so, um, you know, the idea, you know, great idea, right? But again, it's being able to target the right audience um, and having a sponsor. So. You know, if you're going to, you know, have a, a solution, if you want to have a solution for, for example, uh, a company that um, does logistics uh, and transportation management, then, then you need to find basically uh, who it is or which group it is that your solution, you're, you're providing the solution uh, for, right? So being able to target your audience is very important uh, with any kind of, um, you know, transformation project or, or something that you can basically say, hey, um, I can, with this technology, um, you know, help uh, your return on investment, you know, by, you know, X amount. So uh, a lot of people fall flat because they're not able to really target the right, uh, uh, the right group or the right people. So we'll see if we can make this more relevant. I'll be, I want to be aware of time too, guys. So. How many people here work for a company that's trying to sell stuff? Oh, I swear if no one raises their hands, that's going to be so bad. <laughs> How many people here have sales team members that's selling stuff for them? Okay. Wouldn't it be really cool if that salesperson, that sales individual, had access to real-time data that's going to help them grow that relationship the right way right from the beginning for whatever you guys do. That's how you guys want to make it more relevant, right? Because ultimately it's like you're trying to build your you know, business, you know, do certain things, but we tend to forget sometimes that there's key people that's actually going to be using that to benefit your company with hard earned revenue, right? I'm always about to do what's right model guys, but you know, when you guys look at this, that do us right is I ask that question is because I do think that everyone is relevant on like if people adopt this you know, real time type of technology or mindset, everyone can use it, including 
the, the people on the ground floor that's doing all the hard work to run meetings, closing deals, growing relationships, whatever it may that you guys are looking to do. Keep that in mind. Yeah, I think the same thing I was telling you, like this advisors, they are helping customers, high net worth customers. They, it makes a lot of difference. And you'd be surprised to know that the entire transformation was, uh, is, is actually a $600 million uh, project out of which $100 million is completely invested on this emerging technology in incubation. So it makes sense when you get that right buy-in, but then you should also be aware of certain challenges that technology brings in. You know, when you are bringing in sensitive data at the edge, you are compromising on the security compliance part of it, right? How do you deal with that? That is very important because you are now talking about doing something which is probably not tightly managed and monitored with your enterprise firewall, right? The cost, cost of bringing in this technology, it might, at a POC level, it's great, but then beyond that, if you want to replicate that, you're bringing in additional operating costs in terms of managing it. So some cases, it, it kind of balances out. How? Let's say, you know, if you talk about a traditional IoT solution, that's kind of going into the dark now. Like you have a bunch of uh, a gateway connecting, collecting data and pushing the data back into the cloud, and then you're creating some nice dashboard that is gone. There's no value in it because, first of all, one enterprise is not looking at, no one is looking at those dashboards 24 by 7. Right? The value is Come gone. Come on, man. I love dashboards. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure no, everyone loves dashboards. Yeah, Come on. <laughs> dash, but then, see, if you're talking about something real time, then someone has to really sit in front of this computer and then monitor it in a real time. How about then converting that dashboard outcomes into what Ben was saying that, you know, translating into insights, right? Instead of really having dashboard showing some bunch of data lines, you are basically be able to process that with the intelligence and send that as a notification saying that, hey, something is failing. That's much more proactive. That's much more helpful. That is where the edge computing will make a difference. So you are increasing productivity. Yes, I want to spend a couple of hundred thousand dollars in that. You are talking about a traditional IoT solution. You are collecting data and dumping entire data in the cloud. You are increasing the storage cost significantly because it's exponentially increasing. You are increasing the network cost. You know, these mobile companies are not giving this data or network for free. So now if your edge computing construct is able to process a lot of data at the edge, you're actually minimizing that payload that's going back to your cloud, going back to your enterprise, is also giving you a cost advantage. So you can bring that cost to the edge and then kind of create a value. So you have to be cautious of these two aspects very carefully when we are talking about any use case where you want to bring in edge computing. So should we, uh, should we open it up? Still, you, you read yeah. my mind, guys. <laughs> yeah. Let's kind of open it up now. You know, we, we don't want to just keep on talking at you guys. We want to see if we could maybe help with some real, like, relevant things that you guys are dealing with. We'd love to open up for Q and A. Yeah. Any any, any uh, questions or? We got one right there. Yep. How you doing? So I was just curious, your um, edge computing uh, AI software, um, um, how does it uh, run efficiently on the edge? Uh, the AI algorithm itself uh, would be bulky as well, so I'm just wondering, do you have any infrastructure or some special software to run it? Excellent question. I think it's very specific to what we do. So we basically use, we have created bio-inspired model. Okay, I'll go a little bit deeper into it. It's basically the, the way we work on the human nervous systems, it's not about the central nervous system which does everything. You have peripheral nervous systems which can actually work on the reflex. So our patent in the technology, the models that we have created, it actually provides an incremental learning. So your initial stage of, uh, and this is what you're gonna do if you do uh, you know, AI on edge. Your initial model will get trained in the cloud right, whether it's, it's, it's something to do with visual, uh, unstructured data, more complex AI models. 
And then when you generate the model, you basically model is best distributed across age. But now age is basically going to do what we call as an incremental learning. So there are certain federated learning models which can take smaller compute. Okay, so we have built our own hardware as well. Uh, maybe I can talk about it offline. This might not be of relevance to many of you, which actually converts this data using I2C protocols, and then we have uh, in few chips which would perform certain neural net models in it. So essentially, when we are talking about edge doing AI, it's not about something which is building it from the scratch. It is taking the base foundation and performing an incremental learning. Does that answer your question? Okay. What's next? What's next? There we go. I think we want you to come up. Thank you. I love the box. It's right there. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you guys for coming out to uh, uh, educate us on this uh, Internet 2.0. Um, I really agree with you on the uh, S computing concept and uh, the uh, traditional IoT gateway send data to the cloud and all that, it's gonna be gone. Because I actually experienced that. I was uh, helping uh, many different companies in the past to develop the IoT products. Using this technology, the traditional concept, have a gateway, send the data to the cloud and save that data and have the dashboard, you know, to commissioning the device and have the application to communicate with the cloud to get the data back and forth. And uh, after we deploy the product, we experienced nothing but just hassle. Hassle, problem, problem after problem. And the cost of the cloud computing, the cost of the IoT product development is so huge to the point that we have to recall all the product that we deploy in the field and we have to have constant support, constant technical support to the customer. And, and beside all that, they are never happy. The customer never happy. So we have to recall all those products, right? So that's why I agree with the S computing concept that- Did uh, you have a specific uh, question also? But now or? the question I come, yep. here's the question. Uh, it's great to talk about the S computing, about AI, and about all that concept. But uh, the bottom line is how do we solve the infrastructure, hmm. the layer three of the OSI problem? You know, the OSI, they have seven layers. And layer three is the network layer that right now we have a problem. Ben, do you have any thoughts on that? How do we solve that problem? Sure. Uh, so, you know, everything is going to, to the, the cloud, right? And so uh, there are uh, there's software out there where there's a cloud-managed network uh, where uh, that replace the traditional kind of VPN tunnel, whereas uh, the actual packets are encrypted and sent to the destination from a source versus going through a tunnel. Uh, and, and so uh, we work with companies and we've implement, implemented the solution where as, uh, for example, uh, uh, companies that require to have a certain compliance, like a PCI compliance, uh, where they need to have segregated networks uh, on, on site at location. And so when we talk about, about the network, um, there is software out there that allows you to uh, segment the networks and send that traffic uh, in, in an encrypted format. Uh, and so that has really allowed for uh, innovation in software. Uh, again, years ago, you weren't able to do that because you simply did not have the bandwidth uh, if you were at a satellite location uh, and or you were at a remote location. So that's really changed the game and the landscape. Uh, really, uh, within the last, I would say, you know, decade, uh, that's transformed into instead of having standard uh, networks and you have to have site-to-site uh, -site VPNs and things like that. Now, you know, there are companies where they have they have no VPNs, and and all of that traffic is segregated, and encrypted, and so uh, I think that as networks expand as cellular providers expand as 5g continues to be rolled out then software will be able to be developed uh, and be able to utilize that that higher bandwidth great yeah i think you should that is a that is a framework called a software defined networks 
So there are a lot of evolutions to the problem that you have talked about. As I said, that security is a major concern, performance is a major concern. So there are definitely there are underlying technologies which could be a topic of uh, a panel discussion itself. So maybe we would not have enough bandwidth to discuss it, but then we can talk about it offline to know any specific problem. Yeah, I, I think we have time for one more. One question. more? Thank any you. other questions? We good? Well, hopefully you guys found this helpful, right? Uh, I'm sure these guys are going to be around. They're a lot better at this than I am. I'll tell you this right now. <laughs> no, but this was awesome, and hopefully you guys found some insight and some good stuff from this. That's what we're really hoping to do, right? Share some really great, you know, ideas, thoughts. Collaborate. That's what this is all about, I think. Right? Collaboration. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks Thank you. for your time.